in the middle of what's going on, you need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Right at the center of this conflict, this international collision, you're seeing not only the powers of geopolitical forces, you're seeing the powers of light and darkness colliding. That is what actually is happening around the world right now. So as we're, as we're coming into agreement, as we're standing together, you need to keep yourself encouraged because one of the main things that, that happens is people begin to look at the horrific things that are taking place in the news. They're looking at the horrific things that are taking place uh, literally to the lives of people all over the world. And, and that can really bring a crisis fatigue that wants to push you in a corner and cause you to shrink back. Don't you do that. You stay in faith, you come closer to what Jesus is saying, and you continue to build up what the Spirit of the Lord is calling you into. He's calling you to a higher walk. He's calling you to a higher understanding, a way where you know who you are in the middle of conflict, in the middle of these issues. You know, I um, I brought my beautiful Thompson chain today. I want to I talk to you about this. I think it's going to be important. But if you would, repost this right away. One of the reasons I want to say that is because um, I'm, I'm only on Facebook at the moment. This will be up on YouTube later. Um, I'll be posting this everywhere on all the platforms because I only have one camera at the moment. But let me go here if I could. I want to show you something right out of the Word of God. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let me go here with you. This is important. You need to see this today because with what's going on with the war, what's going on with the battle, there's a lot we need to consider. And, you know, we're getting ready to do TV, we're traveling, we're uh, getting so many things done here. But John chapter 14, I want to show you something right here. John chapter 14. Go with me if you would. John chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, Jesus said. Believe also in me. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus was saying, I'm about to go do something that's going to be very shocking. It's going to be very difficult for you. He was going to go offer up his life. And he said, and when I do this, don't let your heart be troubled with all the things you're about to see. Like in the next few minutes. <laughs> like when you see me go down this avenue, don't, don't let your heart be troubled when you see this happen. Now, I want to say this to many of us today that God is calling us to a very high walk. And this international conflict is to bring crisis fatigue, is to come against us. So we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to pray for the peace of God's people, of God's land. We need to pray for that. But I want to say something very clearly to you. None of this is taking God by surprise, and there's terrible things that are happening. And I believe in my spirit, man, we've got one more round. I really do. I believe we've got another round yet. I believe we've got another ap opportunity here to begin to see light and darkness uh, shine brighter than it's ever shined before. And I'm talking really bright, really breaking out. And I've got to tell you, there's difficulty that's coming against the people of God. Uh, there's institutional persecution that people will begin to see because you guys, you realize that whatever the institution cannot control, it has to persecute. And that's how these things operate. And then in addition to that, there is, there is so much that is, is happening. The reformers are coming. We're coming into that time. Now, remember, I've, I've drawn this for you, and I'm going to draw it for you again. Remember this? Um, you realize that this is the timelines we talk about. Look at this. Here we see this timeline. I saw this happening for the nations in the U.S. I saw this, and I saw this, and I saw it coming out again and going on, right? Okay. During this time, I saw things in the nations going down at 30 to 60, all the way to 100. I suppose I should flip that camera for you, huh? Let's see if I can do that. There we go. 30, 60, 100 fold, I began to see a season of, of darkness. And listen, this is nothing new. We don't have to be afraid of the darkness. But in this darkness, I, I saw this time where there was a like a tornado. I had that dream about a tornado, and I want to talk about that maybe just a little more. But this, this tornado was in this setting, this time of darkness. But I do believe that we're going to come out of this. I believe that light will shine out in the middle of all this dark times. This light will shine. The light will shine, and this is what Goshen is, right? The light in Goshen. And I believe we're going to come out of this again at 30, 60, and 100. And this, this war, this setting, I believe is, <clears throat> I believe we're headed for this. I really do. 
But when we come out of it, it's going to be led by the reformers. And I got to say something to you. Reformers are not conducive to the institution. They're not conducive to the institution. And by institution, I mean establishment, uh, establishment media, established church settings, established order of how things have always been done, the, the way it's kind of been done over the years and all this. There's an institutionalism that's been in place. And what I want to say about this is that God is calling reformers to breathe life into the institution, even under the persecution from the very institution they're trying to breathe life into. <clears throat> and what they got to do, and reformers, this is a word for every reformer, Every pioneer right now, you just got to stay cool. You got to stay nice. You got to stay full of God. You got to stay full of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, hey, they didn't like me either. And uh, that's some of the stuff you got to work through. Uh, if you're going to continue to take ground, take territory and open up new things and you got to stay sweet, you got to stay full of God and you're going to be loving people no matter what. And that's a very important thing. You got to stay in the gospel. It's, it's uh, you know, over the years I've had, uh, you know, friends and stuff, and they just say, hey, I guess this is an opportunity to be very Christ-like. So I guess we get to be Christ-like, you know, throughout things. And let me just say this to you. It's, it's important. So when we're looking at this, um, there's the reformers that are coming, and this is what's happening. So right now, part of this is what we're seeing here. Okay? We're seeing a lot of this taking place right here. Keep your eyes on this. I sense there's going to be a major, a major turn in this. It's going to last a moment, but then there's going to be a major turn in this narrative. And the wickedness we're seeing where they're putting um, children in cages. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen some of the, the social media things where they're, they're, uh, they're shooting animals and, and all this that they're coming across. But the reason this stuff is so horrific is because we're not designed to think that way or process that way. So I want to say something to you. There is peace that God has for you. I'm just looking at the top news even right now as I'm, as I'm here with you today. And some of this top news is just filled with um, anxiety. It's filled with fear. It's filled with people saying, what are we going to do? How are we going to operate? You know, what's going to happen next? So one thing that you need to understand, and listen very carefully to me, very carefully. This is a precursor, and it's a preview. I hate to say this. I really do. Uh, people are asking, what is Goshen? Goshen is from the book of Exodus. It was dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen during that time when uh, the 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 10 plagues came on Egypt there was one of darkness but it was light in Goshen and the reformers I believe like Moses or different ones will lead the way out of this but let me say more to you please hear me now this is important what is happening here this is the big news right big news what's happening here I believe will happen here this will be the, the biggest news. It's going to happen here. And this is the thing I've been praying about, and this is something I've been very concerned about, is that they, they want to allow all these borders open, and then they're going to bring it to the USA. That's a great concern I have. What's happening there is the same spirit that wants in here. It wants in the United States. And this is something we've got to really pray about <clears throat> because I believe we can turn it quickly, but it's, um, it's a serious day. And so, again, when you're looking at all the big news, all the things that are happening around the world, realize there's also small news. And the small news, which really is the real story, is all this secretive stuff that's happening with the Manchurian candidate, all the secretive things that are happening with him. And uh, by the Manchurian candidate, I mean the main, you know, uh, ice cream eater, leader of the land that's wandering around being led by the Easter Bunny, if you know who I'm talking about. Um, Heather's over there quietly laughing. She liked that. But here's what I want to say to you is this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with this kind of nefarious stuff. And when you're looking at it, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Let me say some more to you. I need to, um, I need to share a little bit more. Are you ready for some Bible? 
Because I believe in the middle of this, the way we confront a spirit of fear is build yourself up in your most holy faith with the word of God, with the strength of God, with being able to rise above it. <clears throat> Let's go here very quickly. The book of Matthew. Get ready for this. Come on. Because in the middle of these times, when you look at what's going on around the world, show you this here. I like this. Matthew 24. You know, when you know the Bible, you don't have to act like the world. You don't get a, you don't get a freak out like the world does. Listen to me. Okay. When you know the Bible, you look at the times and seasons we're in and you don't have to have a meltdown. I'm going to say this to you very quickly, just very quickly. God is speaking. Are you listening? Is America in, in uh, difficult days? Yes, it's right on our doorstep. But I do believe there's a way out of this. I do believe that there's light and darkness. I do believe that we can have a good report in the middle of it all. I really do. I'm not here giving you the doom and gloom report. Not at all. But listen. Matthew 24. They, they come to Jesus. Remember the narrative? And they said, um, they came to Jesus privately saying, tell us. When will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? What will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, no, all this stuff was fulfilled over and over again. Well, they're saying, what will be the sign of your return at the end of the age? Last time I checked, Jesus hasn't returned yet. Okay? But he goes on to say this. <clears throat> what will your sign be at the coming of the end of the age? Verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed, no one deceives you. No one deceives you. That's his first response. His first response is stick with the word of God. I have that highlighted in my Bible. Stick with the word of God. Look at that. And then it goes on to say, verse 5, For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. I'm the Christ. I got the answers, right? And will deceive many. <clears throat> this is strong. Verse 6, here's the signs right before Jesus returns. I got good news for you. If you can hang in here, I got good news for you today. And it goes on to say, and you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, you ready? See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It's not yet. It's part of the prophetic timeline. I hope you're reposting this. It's going to help somebody today very much. Very much. And I'm going to be here with you through all of it. Even if I can't be in my studio, I'm going to be right here with you. I'll be broadcasting. And this will be up on YouTube. This will be up on Rumble. It will be up on all the platforms. You know, we're Joseph Z live on Rumble. And uh, there's several hundred people on each one of these platforms. But uh, this will be up on that, those platforms in just a moment. <clears throat> but let me show you here. It says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Look at that. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning, just the beginning. The beginning. Listen to me. These are just the beginning of sorrows. Look at that. It says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. That sounds encouraging. I'm sure nobody has this on the refrigerator. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. And many, and then many false prophets will arise up and deceive many. This word deceive, do you see that when false prophets come? The word deceive right there. Do you know what it really, one of the meanings, there's many meanings here, but one of the meanings of deceive means it means to cause to wander. It means to cause to wander. That's one of the meanings of deceive, to cause to wander. So when you see people that are following uh, voices that are not biblical, they're all over the place. And, you know, I say all kinds of prophetic stuff and I go through all that. And I just believe in that, you know, that we could prophesy, but never at the expense of the word of God. We always come back to the word of God. You must come back to the written word of God. You can't defy the word of God. You must submit. Prophecy does not add to scripture. It submits to it. It submits to it. And if it can't submit to it, you got a problem. Now, look at this. It goes on to say, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. It says, and um, 
Uh, these are the beginning of sorrows. They will deliver you all this. Many will be offended for my name's sake. Verse 11. Then many false prophets will rise up. False prophets, guys. And deceive many. And that word deceive means to cause to wander. There's many meanings there. It, it means to deceive outright. But it also means to cause to wander. And sometimes people that get caught up in all the sensationalism or listening to everything from political sensationalism all the way to wild conspiracy stuff, which we will talk about on this broadcast. You know we will. And we'll go down that avenue. But never at the expense of the Word of God. Because the answer is always the same. The answer is always the same. And when people miss prophetic words, again and again and again you know what you got to do you got to go back to the word of god and quit following people your favorite uh you know uh in, <laughs> maybe i'm one of these but your your favorite um youtube prophet or whatever okay listen to me you got to keep reading your bible that's where it is. That's where you're going to find the answers. That's where you're going to find the peace that passes understanding because there's no way to logically quantify what's happening in the world right now. There's no way to logically quantify it. You look at it and say, well, they're crazy. Well, they're doing this. Well, I believe in this one. I believe in that one. You know, I, I could see the reason of the conflict. Oh, they allowed this. They allowed this. There's not going to be any sense of it. These wars and rumors will not make sense, but the Bible will bring faith to you. The Bible doesn't make sense. Although it does, it's a, it's a powerful book. You can study it. It makes sense. It's the most well-written book in the world. But you recognize when you go down this avenue of the Word of God, the Bible's ultimate purpose is not to make sense, although it does. It is to make faith. And when you read the Bible, it generates faith in you, and you know how to stand up against this wicked junk going on in the world right now. And let me just say a little bit more here. This is very important. You need to hear what I'm saying today. You really do. <clears throat> you need the you need the horsepower I'm talking about to stand up against this. Now, I believe that um, that Israel is going to stand up with incredible response. I mean, absolutely shocking the response they're going to have. I do believe that if this thing isn't mitigated, it's going to go directly into World War III. I mean, if we're not, we're already there, I believe, but I believe it's going to become open. But in the middle of it, as I've said, here's what you got to do. Keep watching the small news because what they're doing is they're really using, they're using this because you got the Manchurian and his son who know that they're under the microscope. And so they're allowing the border issue and they're allowing, they knew about this and they said nothing. Intelligence failed big time. They knew something was up. They didn't say anything. And then it happened. They were struck. And when that took place, I believe that was clearly a mechanism. They used something that was in motion, and they even sent resources, so they financed it. Our government, our Cracker Jack government, they financed it. They sent it over there. When you leave, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to say direct names and stuff, but when you leave uh, all of our, our stockpiles over in a certain nation that, by the way, had an earthquake the day after this thing went down. You got to watch these signs and wonders. You start messing with the apple of God's eye, and you're going to have a real problem. And I know people are like, "Oh, I don't, I don't believe in that nation. I, you know, I believe in this." You better watch yourself. You're dealing with God's people. And here's one thing: I'm going to say it loudly and proudly, just so we're clear. I do not believe in replacement theology. I do not believe that the church has replaced Israel. I don't believe that. Because it's very clear, God has a very special covenant with that land. He has a special covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The church was one grafted in. We are grafted in. That's what Paul said. We're grafted in. And basically it says, don't, just to be clear, don't uh, get too proud about that. Fear and love God. Fear God. And God has his own special deal. Now, I do believe every living being needs to repent and receive Jesus. I don't care what nationality you are. You need to repent and receive Jesus. Now, another thing is I've been writing on the whiteboard. We'll have to go find that. I'll have Elijah and the team look it up. But I was writing over the last couple of years, many times the word Iran on the whiteboard. I saw them being a major factor in this issue. Now, when you're looking at this, even from a prophetic sense, Listen, there's so many, the reason I bring up uh, Matthew 24 and we talk about uh, wars and rumors of wars, Jesus told us that his, his return is getting close. And when you see these earthquakes and pestilences and wars and rumors, basically look up because Jesus is coming soon. But it also calls them birth pangs. And birth pangs get more and more intense until there's a delivery, until the birth happens. They get more and more intense. More and more intense. 
And listen, I know people are like, we're in the tribulation. We're there. No, we are not in the tribulation. We are not in the end times. We're in the last of the last days, and the end times have not broken out yet. And, and people say, no, no, you, you, I, I can't listen to this. We're in the, this is obviously the end times. No, listen to me. You got to read the Bible. This is nothing compared to what the end times is going to be. This is nothing compared to what the actual tribulation will be. The tribulation will be so unbelievable. There will be no living being nearly left alive on the planet. It's going to be a smoldering heap. That's what earth will be at the end of the tribulation. This ain't the tribulation. This is wars and rumors of wars, and it's terrible, and it's awful. But I'm telling you, and it's going to get more and more terrible. There may be some reprieves, some breakthroughs here. We're going to see, um, we're going to see the nation that's, that's going. I, I prophesied on September 16th, if you watch me all the time, which uh, I'm grateful for everyone who's here. On September 16th, I woke up. We were in, where were we, Heather? Tulsa? We were in Tulsa. We were with our friends, the Bradys. And I'm at, at a millennial church, great church. And I, I'm, I'm in Tulsa, and I wake up early in the morning, which I sometimes do. And it only happens sometimes. That's the other thing about prophetic people. You don't get a prophecy every single five minutes. It doesn't work like that. And people that do, they're destined to miss it. They're destined to dramatically miss it. And so I try to be very responsible in the way I prophesy to you or when I give prophetic utterances. Sometimes we're just going to teach the Bible. Sometimes we're just going to talk about stuff. I will always talk about the current news. And if I have a prophetic unction, I'll share that with you. But sometimes I actually see things, like literally see them. I see them in dreams and I see them in day visions. And it comes to me. You know what I do? I think, okay, does that line up with the Bible? Should I say this? Is this going to hurt people? Is this going to cause a great confusion among people? Prophecy should not cause confusion. Okay. And so I had that in September 16th. I woke up and I, I saw it. Number one, I woke up and in my dream, I woke up. And this happened uh, just like when I saw 45 lose the election. Uh, through technology. It's the same way God speaks to me over and over again. It's the same way two days uh, beforehand that I saw the Tonga volcano explode. Um, and all of this stuff is live. So you can go back and fact check me on my own stuff. You know, you could go back and look. And uh, two days later, the, the volcano exploded. And we talked about it in very direct detail. We talked about the fires hitting Hawaii in very direct detail a year before they happened because of a vision and dream I had. And you can go back and look at all our stuff. It's live. There's no way you can, there's no way you can come up with a live <laughs> after the fact that was dated. Okay. And so this particular setting, I woke up and I woke up and I was in, first of all, I was in, um, where were I was in, what was the name of the place, Heather? Oh, uh, I was in, um, why am I trying to, I'm thinking about three different cities, Vegas. I woke up and I woke up in the room and I woke up and I was in Vegas and I was still in my dream. And I thought, why am I in Vegas? What's going on in Vegas? And, and I wasn't watching the news. We were traveling and, uh, coming to, uh, the, the main point is that when I woke up, I saw Vegas, so I went live and I started talking about Vegas. And then I started talking about what's, uh, what was happening in Vegas. And the Lord told me what happens in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. Now, as I woke up, I didn't realize there was a major cyber breach in Vegas. And people were commenting, oh, Joseph, old news. I didn't know. I was just in it, you know. And so I shared that. And uh, But then I also saw Israel. And the Lord spoke to me and said, when Israel marches, it will be a new precedent for even them, and it's going to be a new precedent for many people, and the global change will begin to happen. Uh, yeah, people are commenting on the queen. I saw the queen a year leading up to it, and then the morning of the queen's departure, I began to talk about it because it was so heavy on my heart. And then after that broadcast, I remember <clears throat> getting ready for the day, and I felt her go. I felt her go. Now, people can say whatever they want about the queen. I'm just telling you my experience. I felt her go, and it was like a gate. A gatekeeper had left, and something changed in the narrative. And so when that happened, um, I see these things, and I don't see them every day. You know, you got to watch this broadcast because sometimes I see things, sometimes I don't. And, and can I miss it? That's a question people have asked me before. Joseph, can you miss it? The answer is yes. 
We are New Testament people. We're not Old Testament. Today, the Holy Spirit lives in every one of us, and you, as the body of Christ, are called to discern what I'm saying or what anybody else is saying. But you discern it by having this book in you, by having the Word of God in you. And you say, well, how, how can, no, any prophet that would say something, if they miss something, they're obviously not a prophet of God. That was true in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, even Agabus prophesied that Paul would be bound by the Jews, but he was bound by the Romans. And now you might say, well, that's splitting hairs. Well, not if you're going to be that, that strict with the word of God, okay? So here's what happened. Then I saw um, September 16th, let me come back to this prophetic word about Israel. I saw on September 16th, that there would be indeed, let's see if I can pull it up for you. I'll share it. Um, let me just see if I can share it with you right now. I'll go to my own YouTube page and see if I can do this. Let's see what we can do here. Because I, I want you to see this because I shared a prophetic word on September 16th about Israel marching, about Israel advancing. And when they did, and when they did, there was going to be something very serious about it. Oh, it's not pulling up for me. Oh, well, yes, it is. Let's go see what I can do. Are you ready? Let's look at this word. I want to show this to you. Um, here. I found it. Whoa. Oh, I'm getting ads. <laughs> this is a different channel. I have a great sense about Israel. And this is interesting. If you've followed me for some time, periodically, every now and then I get these early morning visitations from the Lord I back in to see things. 16th. And I said, okay, God, so what, what is it that you want me to share? I began to see Israel today. I saw Israel and I heard these words, advance, they will advance, and there will be a new precedent that they will set. When they advance, there will be a new precedent when they advance. And I heard the words, when Israel advances, it begins. You can take it as a sign that it'll begin the the next phase of this uh, WW3, this next phase of difficulty, the next phase of global turmoil is going to be triggered when Israel advances and they don't back up. I see them advancing and not backing up. And when this happens, pay attention, because they will advance and they're going to set a new precedent and it will begin. Israel was a advancement. It's like they were advancing. So I write these words down. I get up and I start writing them when I see these things. But I, I saw Israel and I saw them marching. That's the word I didn't share, marching. I saw Israel marching. They're going to advance. Anyway, so I saw that, right? So here's the point. Why do we see things in advance? Well, I like what Rick Renner says. Uh, God doesn't show us things or teach us things in the Word of God to scare us. He teaches things in the Word of God or, or tells us things to come to prepare us. I think he's the originator of that quote. Everybody's running with it now, but it's uh, God doesn't say these things to scare us. He says it to prepare us. And so when you're looking at what's going on, the Lord showed me this. I believe that it's a new precedent that they would march and they're going to march against their adversaries. Now, where it goes, we got to continue to pray. We really do. We got to continue to pray. There is so much that they want to do and they want to get them in a conflict. And ultimately, this is because our government is bought out, many of them. And because of that, they're trying to draw us into this conflict through a variety of ways and means. They ultimately want this to happen, not just with Israel on a global scale. They want it to happen. Here's why. Because it takes all the light off all the nefarious misdeeds they've been doing so they can totally and completely get away with it. War is good for this government. War is good for these people that are, are running the show. They want this to happen. And as they continue to go down this avenue, you're going to see more and more and more. And it is interesting, like people are saying, there was something around that national alert. And of course, we had people commenting and saying, see, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Yeah, amen. Nothing happened. I said that the, the broadcast that morning, right before it, I said, well, my personal thought on this, and if you remember, I said, I don't think this is going to be a major thing. I think it's just going to be an alert. And, uh, and it was. And I said, but here's the conspiracies. Here's what people are thinking. Then we went live right after the alert because I believe in accountability. I think it's good to make sure we're giving a well-rounded point of avenue or point of, of view on things. But at the end of the day, listen to me. God is speaking. And if you have ears to hear what's going on, we realize we are going into this time. I believe that we could stop it. I believe it can be turned at any moment. I do see a good outcome down the road. But there's going to be a lot of, of, uh, of collateral in, in the, 
the mix. I got a phone call from Allie uh, la yesterday, I think, uh, our daughter, and she just said, Dad, I'm crying. I'm crying. I feel sick over this. I'm praying over uh, the nation of Israel. I'm praying over these people that they're doing these things to. I said, you got to intercede, but don't let it inside you. And I'm saying that to many of you, especially you who get very, uh, you know, prophetically sympathetic and it's horrible. It is wicked what's going on. And we need to take action as a nation. We need to do something. And the best thing we can do is intercede and begin to pray the word of God, pray justice prayers, pray the word of God, pray the word of God, pray Psalm 122, where it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We've got to pray the word of God. And I'm telling you, but don't, don't let the images you see, which the media only lets so many things out, right? And, and it's all mechanized towards you. You don't let it inside you. You continue to press out in faith. You hate the dark darkness, but you stay in faith. You stay in faith. And God is calling you through. So here's, here's the bottom line. Let me give this to you. This is what I see. I saw this coming. It would be a new precedent. I believe there's going to be more changing of the guard in the middle of this. Okay. And people said, you know, Joseph, the speaker of the house, what's happening there and all this. Look, I only say what I see. Sometimes I see stuff. Sometimes I don't. I pray. And uh, if I see it, I'll tell you. If I miss it, I apologize. We don't miss it very much. Thank God. <laughs> but if I, if I do miss something, I will, I'll own it. I really will. I'll come on here and say, guys, I did my best. I shared what I thought I saw. And uh, here's where it's at. Here's the real story. But listen, and I believe that there's a great, um, there's a lot of accountability coming for prophetic voices that sensationalize things. There's a lot of sensationalism out there. I'm telling you, there's a lot of sensationalism and it will cause people to wander. You got to stick with the written word of God. Okay. Now, what do I think is going to happen? Well, number one, I don't know entirely what's going to happen, but I know what I saw. I saw them marching. And they're about to do that. They are doing it. They're going to respond with such unprecedented force, I believe, that it's going to be earth shaking. But these other nations want that because they want to come together and go after this whole setting as well. They want to press the border. They want to wipe out um, that nation. And in this picture, I believe the spirit of the Lord is going to continue making a way where there's been no way. Now, my sense about the U.S., here's my sense. Now, I'm not just U.S. only, okay? There's many nations that watch us, and every one of you is precious to the Lord. I talk about the U.S. because I live here, okay? I talk about it because it's, it's my nation. It's, it's what I see. But I, I stand with every nation that loves Jesus and every person. We are Jesus first. The church will remain even if the United States does not. Okay, but I do believe that the United States has a prophetic destiny. So does every nation. Every nation has a prophetic destiny. I'm feeling the spirit of God right now. I sense the spirit of the Lord right now. We're about to be on Day Star, and we're we're standing with our, our dear friends, uh, you know, Joni Lamb and Doug and all the people there, and I'm just so grateful for what they're doing, uh, standing up with Israel. And um, I will be with, I think, I think today I'm going to be with Jonathan Kahn. And I, I really like that brother. I like what he's talking about. Um, the only thing that would make it better is if Rick, be with Rick Renner. <laughs> um, but let me say something about this. The spirit is making a way where there has been no way. God is opening up an avenue for your life personally. He is opening up an avenue, an avenue that is going to begin to put darkness back on its heels. It's going to put darkness back on its heels. There's going to be light shining out of your home and out of your family in an unprecedented way. The other thing I see that, and I sense this so powerfully, and this is, guys, listen, this is why I also went down this avenue. Um, I went down this avenue because the Lord spoke to me about light and darkness and the fact that people are going to, they need to lean into the kingdom, God's kingdom, so you can continue breaking through. And that's why I wrote this, okay, Breaking Hell's Economy. Get this at josephz.com. The reason I wrote it is because it's a prophetic now word for what exactly we're facing right now. And God is going to make a way where you outgrow the yoke. I'm talking outgrow the intimidation, outgrow the darkness, outgrow it all. And you come against this and you break out of this Babylonian assault, because that's what this is. 
And there is a great anointing for provision. I'm not talking about the wild, crazy stuff. I'm just talking about you having God's ability on you to come through. Having God's ability on you to come through it all. To come right through it all. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord is making a great way for you in the middle of this. You are going to find, a, just like, okay, let me, exp I'll try to explain this. I'll just explain it. I won't try to draw it for you. There, the kingdom of God is coming closer and closer. In other words, Jesus is getting closer and closer to returning to earth. And as he gets closer and closer to returning, these wars and rumors are going to increase. The, the, the veil is getting thinner. The challenges are getting greater. It's getting darker and darker in Egypt, which is the spiritual picture of the world, so to speak, not God's kingdom. In other words, the world's way of doing things, the Babylonian mindset. It's getting more and more pressurized because... The time is getting shorter. Jesus is coming soon. It's getting closer and closer. And the closer it gets, the more pressure is happening. And things are just bursting all over, right? But here's the other good news about it. Please hear me. In the middle of this, the other good news, right in the middle, is as it's getting closer and closer, right there, you're going to find new anointing on your life. You're going to find new horsepower on your life. You're going to find new abilities to do things you couldn't do before because the spirit of the Lord is upon you and he has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent you to bind up the brokenhearted, Isaiah 61. Luke chapter 4, he's anointed you for this time. On a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is, right in the middle of darkness. You're going to bust out of this and you're going to break things off. I'm telling you, this is the hour of the greatest return of sons and daughters who've been wandering. This is the hour where the pervert mafia, so to speak, is going to have a confrontation. Listen, I have so much love for people. I know I say those kind of things all the time, but I have love for people. I care about people. You know, uh, um, one of my dear friends said to me, you're the most pastoral prophetic guy I've ever met. <laughs> you, got, you got a real pastoral flow about you. Um, let me just say, God is saying to you, in the middle of it all, you don't have to fear this mess. You're the answer. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is the answer. And, and let me say one more. Listen, this is so important. You got to hear me, okay? I, I'm trying to spend a little time with you because there's so much going on in the world. And I've said a lot of prophetic things throughout this. If you have ears to hear it. If you have ears to hear it. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this to you. It says all this, but look at this. I, was, I landed on uh, Matthew 24, 11, where it's talking about false prophets rise up and deceive many, not if they're in the word of God, but look at this. Um, and it says, and because, verse 12, this is the part that you have to watch out for right here. This is for you, okay? Yes, you, me and you. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Cold love. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. You got to put on some endurance. You got to get uh, endurance on. You got to put the face mask on and be like, let's go. It's prison rules. <laughs> right? So, but look at this endurance. I just heard something in my spirit. Are you ready? I just heard something in my spirit. Sorrow may last for the night, but joy, your joy, Jesus' joy, will come in the morning. Sorrow may last for the night. And I kept seeing this. I'm going to share this again, too. Here's a prophetic word. I saw something happening in the middle of the night. Did this, does, can anybody tell me, did this battle break out in, at night or just happen in the middle of the day? I, I haven't check, checked that with what's happened over there. I saw this. I'm going to just draw this for you again. I saw sorrow where they pull a quick one at night. I believe this is a literal night. And this could be a more than one reoccurring word here. But sorrow happening at night. In other words, they're going to pull a quick one. But it'll be discovered. Right? And I see joy or light symbolically coming in the morning. What do I mean by this? I believe there's going to be a, a plan that they launch at night, literally at night. But there will be a discovery of it. And joy will come in the morning. Light. Joy. Right? Joy. 
love, joy, peace, patience, right? I, I'm seeing this. There's something about this. I had an angelic visitation some time ago, uh, back in 2019, I believe. And when this happened, I don't like to sensationalize it because people get really involved with angelic things. And um, it just simply said, the message said this, there's coming a turn in the tide and the Lord has need of you after the 2020 election. <laughs> oh, Pastor Locke did that? Janice just said on here that Pastor Locke did an impression of me going prison rule. <laughs> I love that. He's my brother, man. I love that man. <laughs> Get out of here, you witch. <laughs> I love that, man. But um, I just want to say to you guys, Jesus is Lord. And you're going to find power on you you've not found before. You're going to find a new horsepower on you you've not found before. I release over your life right now. Man, I feel the anointing of God. I feel the power of God. You're going to feel and sense power from the Holy Spirit from on high for those of you who remain bold, for those of you who continue to press in to the fullness of God. Thank you for reposting this. I know people are saying they got knocked off their back on the feed. Thank you for being here. We've had over 3,200 people uh, pretty consistent on this broadcast today, uh, live right up here, you know, where you see it. But um, I just want to say to you, don't fear. There is a power coming on you. And I want to say this to many of you who are reformers, pioneers, you're supporting reformers and pioneers. Oh my goodness, I am getting a prophetic download right now, Heather. Right now. I'm seeing other prophetic people. I'm seeing one in particular. I'm not going to name some of this stuff, but I'm, the Lord's showing me some things right now. It's awesome. There's an anointing on you. Thank you, Jesus. You can't say the right thing to the wrong people. Don't ever forget that. But it almost seems like you can never say the wrong thing to the right people. And when Jesus is your ally, you celebrate those who are with you and those that you're called to be with. And if you're not invited to some parties, don't crash it. Boy, have I learned that. That's a, a lesson for reformers. But I'm telling you right now, there's gonna be a uniting to your tribe. This is a tribe. Welcome to the <laughs> Misfit Island tribe where the outcasts are turned into broadcast with a podcast. That's me, I'm an outcast with a broadcast, turned into a broadcast, I'll say it this way, outcast, to a broadcast with a podcast. <laughs> I'm an outcast with a broadcast. To, no, outcast turned to broadcast with a podcast. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and God's just saying to you right now that there's strength. And many of you have been that black sheep, so to say. Many of you have been that outcast. Welcome to Misfit Island. Welcome to the Red Church. Welcome to Red Tribe. It's what God's called. And you say, what do you mean by Red Church, Red Tribe? What do you mean by that? I'm talking about the blood of the lamb. The blood of Jesus, that everything that blood paid for is yours. And that's how we stand up against this nefarious, wicked, evil age. Nefarious, wicked, evil age through the blood of the lamb. And I sense an anointing coming on you right now. I sense an anointing coming on you right now, the power of God coming on you. I just bless you. I speak increase to you. I come against this crisis fatigue outcast to a broadcast with a podcast. I speak the spirit of God. I speak the spirit of God, the power of God over you by the word of God in Jesus name. In this world, Jesus said you would have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I command every chain to break off you right now. Jesus loves you and so do we. You're not alone. This battle's not over. We have a victory in front of us. You don't have to fear what the world is fearing. Not right now. 
Christ Jesus is with you, the hope of glory. Don't you fear. Don't you shrink back. On a bad day, you're anointed, and I mean anointed, to be the best there is. God has called you. He has marked you. Who cares? What does that old song say? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's going to do. The word and faith is my sword and shield. And Jesus is the Lord of the way I feel. I like that song. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't care what the devil's going to do. Now listen, Jesus is making a way for you. You're coming through it all. There is yet good to come out of all of it. In the middle of this, there's a silver lining every time. The Lord never leaves you hopeless. The Holy Spirit will never leave you hopeless. The Word of God will never leave you hopeless. You will have the peace that passes all logical understanding. You look at bad things and go, I got peace. People say, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. But you have supernatural peace on you. Supernatural horsepower. I release that to you. I release that to you. I'm going to say one thing, then I'm going to pray for you. I'm say one thing to you, then I'm going to, then I'm going to pray for you. Don't go anywhere. I want to pray for you for a moment. I'm going to say this little bit about partnership and then I'm going to pray for you. So please hang here with me. I just need to say this because people say, Joseph, you know, you, you bring up partnership and giving and all that. Why, why do you do that? Well, here's the reason is because every day we have new people. That's number one. And I want them to understand the right mechanism so they don't get scammed. And that's also the reason I do it. Number two is the scammers. I don't want people getting scammed. I try to fight it the best I can, but social media is very expansive right now. And so um, the only way you give here is at josephz.com. Uh, you can get these books. I got this. I got a book on angels. I have another book coming out soon um, on the prophetic. I have a lot of things, and that's going to be a, a very extensive book. It'll be a blessing to many people. they are working on it. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to stand with the ministry, go to josephz.com, or you text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. Let me, let me say one more thing to you. This is very important. This is important. Um, this is very important. Here, check this out. Let me show you something here, if I can do this. This is my traveling board, right? 719-719-3637. I don't know if you see that there. See that number? You text the word join to this. I'm, I'm a high tech redneck today. Look at this. 719-719-3637. You text the word join. You should screenshot that. We have like 20, 25,000 people on this text to join list and it's growing rapidly. And we send you out periodic prophetic words, updates, live feeds, all that. Please be a part of our text to join list. You have to put this number in your cell phone and then from your text messages, you text this and phone number, this word join, and then you'll get a prompt and you follow the directions. It's really simple. You know, you just type in a few things and you get it. And you know, we, we don't, it just works from the mechanism. We're not doing anything with your data other than texting you. And we don't text you every day and all the time. We just text you. But let me also say this. Um, this is important. This is the only way through texting that you give. The other number here is 719-259-0029. And that's where you text the keyword give. That's how you give to the minister. I feel like Mr. Rogers right now. That's the way you give. You go to josephz.com. You can download the Joseph Z app, but these are the two phone numbers we use, you know, and you can't call these. These are just for text and donations and all that. Anyway, I want to say that that's the only way you do it. And um, if you stand with us, you're going to get messages from us and, and all that. So I speak life over you. Let me pray for you. I need to pray for you because this, these things get worse before they get better. So you need, to, you need to become strong with what's going on in the world. So right now, in Jesus' name, I speak to our friends. I speak to our partners. And every viewer, whether you can partner or give or not, we're here for you. It's not about that. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for those of you who help us take ground we're taking to, re, you know, to develop this building we're working on and all that. Thank you. I speak life over you right now in Jesus' name. 
the peace that passes understanding. Uh, people are asking, can I, I can answer this question. People are asking, can I do this from outside the US? Well, you can download the Joseph Z app and you'll get notified there as well. If the text isn't working and we're working on that because we've had an overwhelming response and we are, we are working on that. You can uh, download the Joseph Z app from your favorite app store and we're live on there and we put new stuff up there nearly every single day. And that's where we have special programs and stuff I can't talk about here, right? We know that because we've got all those wonderful people that watch <laughs> and try to make sure you're not on and all that. But let me just say this to you right now in Jesus' name. I bless you and I speak the peace that passes all understanding over your heart, over your mind, over your emotions in Jesus' mighty name. On a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. Those of you that are saying you're crying, you're feeling the pain of the world, go to the word of God. Stay in peace. Keep praying. Pray in the spirit. Spend time with the Lord Jesus. Spend time knowing him in the hour of your visitation. God is with you. And on a bad day, you're, you're anointed to be the very best there is. I love you. I love you. I bless you. And don't you shrink back today. On a bad day, you're anointed for this. Listen to me, you're anointed for this. And there will be another tomorrow. There will be another day. We got hope on the horizon, but let's lean in with what's in front of us. I'm gonna keep talking about this Israel thing and so much more throughout this week. Be praying for me. I have a lot of television to do. We're doing uh, some live things and we're helping some of these networks that are really, um, I believe, godly networks that are raising up uh, voices and standing up and, and reaching millions and millions of people that really need their help. And so we're standing with Daystar this week and then I'm <clears throat> doing meetings uh, in Florida and then I'm doing meetings in Tennessee with uh, D.R. Harrison. That's gonna be great. We're gonna be with my friend Massey Campos uh, in Florida for several days uh, this next week, actually starting uh, tomorrow, I think. So it's going to be awesome. But anyway, I bless you all. Jesus is Lord, and I'll see you again live very soon, tomorrow morning, same time. God bless you guys. Share this everywhere if you would. Subscribe to all the stuff, especially YouTube and Rumble. God bless you guys. Love